Hello, thank you for joining us again. Um, I am Amy, Head of Marketing, PR and Communications at Pets Pajamas. Um, for those of you that aren't yet aware of Pets Pajamas, where have you been? Um, but also we are the number one dog friendly travel destination in the UK and we'll find and book you your perfect pet getaway with for all breeds, all budgets, which is ideal. We're super, super lucky today to be joined by Emma Hammett. Um, Emma is the CEO and owner of the award-winning first aid for pets.net first aid for life where you can find many many free resources and courses online one being a free cpr dog course as well so once you finish this webinar head on over to emma's website first aid for pets.net and download the course details Emma's been super, super generous in offering an exclusive discount to us as well just for viewers of this webinar so make sure you stay tuned until the end and I'll give you the details of the discount then. Now that is enough of me, fast talking, babbling on. I'm gonna hand you over to our expert, Emma. Hello, hi, thank you for joining us. So I'm Emma Hammett. Uh, I run First Aid for Pets, First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com. Um, I've also written a few books, uh, one of who, which is um, First Aid for Dogs that you can get on Amazon. It's quite a useful um, sort of accident prevention, first aid type book with lots of pretty pictures and useful directions that you can use as you go through. So today I'm going to take you through how to give your pet CPR, how to give your dog CPR, um, should you find that they are unconscious and not breathing. Now, I really seriously hope that you will never have to do this. Um, and I'm afraid that actually their chances of survival are not that great when you've got to the point where they're unconscious and not breathing. So they've only got a six to seven percent chance of you being able to help. But that is six to seven percent that they wouldn't have otherwise. So I'm going to explain what to do. And um, I'm happy to take um, a few questions, which are probably easier actually to take through the um, through your Facebook page, which we can do through Pets Pajamas. Sounds um, good. Through our, on questions later. So I'm just going to take you through. Um, it's going to be quite a, a swift, brisk sort of run through. And actually, the angle is not very good from from these um, for using this as a as a webinar way of teaching. So if you do want to go to the free online course um, on firstaidforpets.net, then you will find that there is a much clearer angle and you can actually see a real um, dog with us demonstrating on and you can, you can see a lot clearer as to what we're doing. So this is Casper, our CPR mannequin that we would use um, if you came on one of our courses. Um, and Casper is a, a really useful dog to have because you can pull their tongue forward so that we will do that later when we are opening and checking their airway. And you can take their pulse as well. And if you're on one of the courses, you can feel that the pulse is working. So um, it's, it's good to do. And it means that you can actually feel what it's like to do CPR. So that's what I am using here. Although from the angle you're at, you can't see it as clearly as you might like to. So apologies, apologies for that, the wonders of, of doing this remotely. So first of all, if it isn't your pet, and people hate me saying this, but if it isn't your pet, you have to get permission before doing CPR on a dog that you find, ideally, because pets belong to the owner. And if you were able to do something and bring them back and you caused additional damage or if you did something wrong and you caused damage to their pet and um, they incurred additional X charges as a result, you could be liable for it. So if it isn't your pet, please always ask permission from the owner before you are helping. We just explain that you do know what to do because you have um, learned about it and you might be able to help. So um, the other thing is, when you are approaching um, an animal that you don't know, um, always approach with caution. That's even an animal that you do know. So if they are in pain um, or, or they're scared, they can react differently, as, as you well know. So approach them with caution. If they are lying there and you're not sure what's happening, approach them 
ideally from behind and just touch them gently with your foot um, on their back and just see if there's any form of response. And if there isn't a response when you touch them with your foot, use the back of your hand because it's sort of less invasive than using the front of your hand. So just touch them gently with the back of your hand and you're just waiting to see, as you would with a human, you're testing for a response. Be aware of danger, so just be aware of what might have happened to them. And make sure that you're not putting yourself in danger. So if they could have run into a, um, you know, a serious electric fence and been electrocuted or something, just make sure that you are not at risk of injuring yourself on whatever has injured them. So you approach cautiously, you touch them, um, and you speak to them. And if there is no response, then um, you're assuming that they are unconscious. Have a look at them as well and see if they look unwell. If they're looking like a floppy unwell dog. You might be able to see that maybe um, their mucous membranes here are not looking in sort of normal color and they've sort of got a bluish tinge to them. That is not a good sign. That means that they are cyanosed and they haven't got enough oxygen going around their system. Okay, so you check for danger. You check for response and there is no response. So now you need to open the airway and you do that by just what for another um, helpful, helpful beast here. You would just pull their neck back a little bit and open their airway like that. So just very carefully lengthening their neck back a bit and pull their tongue forward and um, very gently and be extremely careful that you know, they really are unconscious and they're not going to bite you. So don't put yourself at risk. So you'll be putting them on their right hand side, ideally, when you're doing this, because their heart is uppermost if you're doing it that way. And you're pulling back and you're pulling the tongue forward like that. They've got long tongues and the tongue can actually curl back and block their airway. So pulling their tongue forward is, is helpful to see what's happening. And have a look as well and see if there is anything obvious that you can remove with your finger and thumb. Um, again, being very careful, but dogs do choke on things. And um, in fact, choking is a really, really common um, veterinary emergency or a first aid emergency in pets um, that you should know about. Um, maybe we'll cover that again. Uh, i cover that on another one, <laughs> Amy. So, um, so what you would do is just extend their head back a bit, pull the tongue forward, and see if they are breathing. Okay, so you're opening the airway and checking their breathing. If they've got a tight collar on, I would take that off at this point. Um, move their paws forward a bit, just make it easier for them to breathe. Okay, so you've established that they are unconscious, and not breathing. Now, if they had been breathing, you'd be putting them into their recovery position, um, which is on the right-hand side with the head extended there. And if you're worried that they were going into shock, you would just raise their bottom slightly on something so that they would be um, down in a sort of draining position and you would get them to the vet quickly. Obviously, you would be, if you've got a serious veterinary emergency, you would be phoning the vet um, and getting veterinary advice and getting them um, ready to get to the vet as quickly as you can. So that's if they're unconscious and they're breathing. So if they're unconscious and they're not breathing, you're going to need to help them. So what you would do is you would pop their tongue back in and you would hold their mouth and nose like this. So hold around their snout. And ideally using a face shield, I'm not going to show you with a face shield at the moment, but usually you would have a face shield that you would just get out and put on just to give yourself a bit of distance. You would blow into their nose. And you're going to, I don't know if you could see that the chest rose when I did that. It's very small, small that you can see, but actually from here I can see that the, the chest is rising. So you're breathing into them and you're breathing at a rate of about sort of Three, per, three breaths per second, um, uh, well, one breath every three seconds, sorry. Um, so about 20 breaths per minute. So one breath every three seconds. So that's the sort of rate you're doing. And you would breathe into them for up to a minute. 
And what you're hoping at this point is that in doing this, that they will come back to life. And this might be all you have to do. So, so you keep going um, for up to a minute. And if they start to breathe, then they're unconscious and breathing. You're going to phone the vet. You're going to transport them to the most local vet um, in the recovery position. And hopefully all will be well. If they're unconscious and they're not breathing and you can't get them to breathe by doing this, you're breathing into them for up to a minute. You're checking to see if their heart is beating, which you can do either by finding their pulse here, or at this point you're talking more of a core pulse, um, the heartbeat that you're trying to find here. And if there's no sign of a heartbeat at all, what you would then do is start um, compressions. So you've breathed into them for up to a minute, there's been nothing's happening. So now what you are doing is pushing hard and fast on the chest, the up over the top, elbows locked, heel of your hand, pushing down. The heart is about here. So it's about here on a dog like this. Um, on um, a sort of flat chested dog, you might find it easier to have them on their back like that and you'd be pushing like that. You might need somebody else to hold them. And on a keel shaped chest, so like a whippet or something, perhaps a little bit further forward. And you're pushing down hard and fast on the center of the chest. So you're pushing down um, sort of um, breath, um, uh, compression, like this. Pushing down hard and fast, 100 beats or 100 to 120 beats per minute. Pushing down like that, and you're doing 30 compressions. I've lost count because I wasn't counting. So once you've done your 30 compressions, you would then go back and do two. Two breaths, and then back to the 30 compressions. So you keep going, 30 compressions to two breaths. 30 compressions to two breaths. And remember, you've got that six to 7% chance that you might be able to bring them back to life. But that is still six to 7% they wouldn't have otherwise. So I hope that's been helpful. It's been a quick, a quick fire um, explanation as to how to resuscitate your pet. And there's much more information and far more thorough explanation, um, which you can see at a better angle um, if you go either onto um, our site and we've just got lots of information on it or just one of our free courses. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Emma. Um, I actually had no idea, genuinely had no idea to perform CPR on, on my dog. And it's always worrying, isn't it? You think, oh, I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll never need that. But it's always good to know definitely it's good to know it's the same with humans too we hope we never need to use it indeed indeed um well guys thank you so much like i say you can access the free uh, dog cpr course over on firstaidforpets.net and great idea emma let's do the next one on choking next week um please head on over and follow at first aid for life on instagram Facebook, Twitter. If you've got any questions about today, like Emma said, head over to at the Pets Pajamas and pop them on our Facebook. We'll be hosting more first aid dog webinars with Emma and a live Q&A coming very soon. And very, very kindly, Emma has offered an exclusive 10% discount on the resources. Head on over to firstaidforpets.net and quote Pets Pajamas for 10% off. Thank you so much. Amy, I think I made it 25% off. <gasps> oh, <laughs> you are treating us. <laughs> and that's only for a very short time. Amazing. Well, don't miss out. Go and get your 25% off. Thank you so much, Emma. Pleasure. Superstar. Take care. Have a good Thank day. You. Bye. Bye.